Hey guys, before I show you the finished dog feeder, I would like to welcome the newest member of our family and that is Wally, which is short for Walnut. He's our new wiener dog and today's sponsor is Evolve Pet Foods. I am so excited to be working with Evolve again. They make dog foods and cat foods. This is just a sampling of what they have. This is some of their dog treats and their dog foods. Evolve makes super premium pet foods. As far as the premium pet foods, this is a fraction of the price of some of the bigger brands and this is high quality stuff. Wally, as you can see here, he only wants the good stuff and that's Evolve. You want one of these treats, buddy? Jerky bites. You want a jerky bite? You will find no soy, wheat, or corn in their foods. I'm telling you, this is the premium stuff. Wally loves it. There are no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives in their foods. No fillers, just good stuff. Unleash your pet's full potential with Evolve. I would like to thank them for sponsoring today's video and allowing me to experiment with this dog feeder. I am happy to be working with them again and we absolutely love their food. When we had cats, we were feeding them the Evolve food and now that we got two wiener dogs, all they eat is Evolve food. So thank you again for sponsoring today's video. All right, Wally, you ready to explain why we made some of our decisions with our dog feeder? Some of the mistakes that we made? All right, so let's talk about this dog feeder. All right, so let's talk about where I got some of the materials. This PVC pipe, that came from Home Depot as well as the threaded rod and the nuts and bolts. Uh, the PVC pipe has a walnut veneer. This is paper-backed walnut that I got from my local hardwood dealer, Kencraft. And then the bottom is solid walnut and that also came from Kencraft. And you can visit them at kencraftcompany.com. They do sell online. They are friends of mine and they are located here in Toledo. Ohio. The knob, the star knob, I printed out on my new 3D printer. I'm just getting started in 3D printing. Uh, I, my 3D printer comes from Matter Hackers and they sell all kinds of 3D printers and filament and they are also friends of mine so check out Matter Hackers and expect to see some more 3D printing involved in my woodworking projects. Let's talk about the mechanics of this guy. The star knob screws off and this lid comes off. So, there are just, there are two bolts here with a washer sandwich there to keep the auger from going that way. And then there's a bolt with a ground down washer there to keep it from going this way. The auger comes from this place online that I found. I bought a four inch, a three inch, and a two inch because I didn't know which one I was going to need. After doing some tests, the four inch seemed to have the best flow for this project. It fits perfect in PVC pipe. There was no plan going into this project. Everything was just Let's just see what happens. Let's see what works because the whole thing is an experiment. We're gonna call this a working prototype. This is iteration number one. Once I found a PVC pipe that would work with this auger, um, you can see that the inside of it is hexagon. So the inside of it holds a bolt and that's what keeps it locked into place when you, when you turn. Um, so we have, this acorn nut that has like a little pivot point. And what that does is that rests on here and then just spins. I drilled out and put a quarter in there so it was spinning on metal instead of wood so it wouldn't wear that away. Once we got the PVC pipe and the auger all situated, the next thing I had to figure out was how can I cover up this top so debris and bugs don't get in there and the food stays fresh? And so I carved this guy out of a solid piece of walnut. I cut out a template on the bandsaw and used that as my routing template to create this groove. And then this groove sits right on there and locks into place. The star knob I designed in Fusion 360. I've been diving really deep into Fusion 360 lately and it is now my 3D software of choice. I designed it so it would fit this bolt in there. The plan was to glue the bolt in there but it friction fit in there so tight that I did not have to do that so I designed it. 
guess fairly well in Fusion 360. Printed that out on my new Ultimaker 3. I have a hard time getting started on a threaded rod because this was cut with a hacksaw and it's got a sharp edge and I need to file that down so this goes on there a lot easier. There we go. So once we got that, then we made this base part. This is cut out over on the CNC and and then we cut this at a 45 degree angle here. And at first, this was only half the height. And we ran into a couple problems. At half the height, the food would come out and get trapped right here because there wasn't enough space for the food to flow freely. So we had to raise it up, giving it a little bit more room so the food could flow out. And then we still had some flow problems that this hole right here was um, too small. And we did two things to fix that. One is I scoop this out over on the spindle sander. So there would be a little bit bigger of a hole. And then number two, I realized that I CNC routed this way too deep. And so the deeper that that went, the more it closed that hole. So I had to raise it by adding these little inserts in there until we found the perfect height with the perfect amount of food flow. Once we got that, we thought, okay, we're gonna go to the pet store and we're going to buy a dish that would just slide underneath there. I didn't see anything that I liked, so we rushed back to the shop. We were running out of time. Um, we rushed back to the shop. I'm like, I'm gonna make a bowl. And so, I got to use my bowl bit for the first time ever. I've had this guy for years and I've never actually used it. Mark Spagnolo, the Wood Whisperer, has a great video on making bowls with a, this type of bit. And it's like seven or eight years old. But we cut out the pattern over on the laser cutter and then we double-sided taped that to the walnut, uh, drew out the line, hogged out most of the waste over on the drill press, and then went to the router to use this bit to remove all that waste and then we rounded over the edges. That fits in there perfect. So that is the feeder. Like I said, this is a working prototype. Iteration number one, there are a couple things that are mm, about it. This sits too far back. So food gets back there and then the dog has to work at it to get in there. If you have a bigger dog, uh, they might be able to knock this over, but wiener dogs are only that tall, so they won't. I am sure there are much better ways to do this, and I am hoping that you guys will comment down below and give me some suggestions for number two. Um, this will work fine, but I know it could be a lot better. I don't really have uh, the engineer's type mind. I'm not good with mechanics, and I know many of you are, so I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this. There does seem to be uh, an off position when it is turned the correct way. Let's see if I can demonstrate this here. So when this closes, food can't fall out. So what I need to do is I need to print out a little sticker that goes on top of here that will point an arrow to the closed position. That way the dog can't knock on it and then the food come traveling out. So that is it. This change design many times throughout the process because I really did not know where we were going. Um, what a crazy project. We have regular woodworking, we have CNC, we have laser cutting, we have 3D printing. We got everything involved in this project and it was super fun because I learned so much. I learned that I really don't like working without plans because I don't have, it's really hard to tell how long a project's gonna take or even if it's gonna work at all. There were so many times where I'm like, this is, this is a waste of my time, this isn't gonna work. And it turns out it did work, but I know it could be better because it doesn't always distribute the same amount of food every time, and that probably has to do with how much food is in the canister here and that weight pushing on the food as it's traveling down when it's opened up. So um, normally it seems like a half a turn will let out the right amount of food for my dogs, and then you finish that half a turn to put it back in its closed position. But uh, sometimes I do have to turn it twice to get enough food to come out of there. Working prototype. 
I'm learning folks, I am learning. I'm really happy to be working with Evolve again. Our dogs love their food, we like working with them. It's a super high premium dog food at a fraction of the cost of other premium dog foods. Please check them out. When we had cats, we used them for our cats, and now that we just have a couple of dogs, we use Evolve to feed our dogs and to give them treats when they are good boys. All right, thank you for watching. Again, please let me know in the comments down below what I could do to make this better. I'm sure there's some sort of like wheel that could come out and scoop out the perfect amount of food and distribute it. I'm sure there are much better ways. I would love to hear what you think. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And we will see you in a few days. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. Thanks, guys. <laughs>